Consumers are getting 13 months. I got to move fast because they're not beating us at the polls and they know it. Despite the phony, despite the phony polls that you see all the time. They're phony polls. You know, polls are no different. Remember, I always used to talk about polls. I know polls very well. Polls are no different than crooked writers. They're crooked polls. Crooked polls. No different. Control. 15,800 feet. Well, a lot of media. Inbound. Look Whiskey. Back. Yankee. Zulu. Echo. Echo. A lot of media. Radar contact. Waypoint. Whiskey. Yankee. Zulu. Echo. Echo. Heading. Zero. Four. Eight. They are so dishonest. And frankly, they are so bad for our country. They are so bad. And they could be so good for our country. They could be so good. And maybe they'll change and maybe they won't. I've been waiting for a long time. You know, after I won the last election, I said, you know, finally, it's okay. Finally, I'll get some great press. They got worse. They got worse. I said, finally, we're going to get, I said to the first lady, darling, we're going to finally get respect. We're going to finally get media and press coverage. That's going to be great. Look at what we've done. And I'm telling you, they did. They got worse. And they know they cannot win. You understand. Well, if you didn't understand, honestly, there's no way anybody could win because you'd believe them. If you believe them, there's no way anybody could win because it's like 94 percent. I can do the greatest things in history and they'll make them bad to very bad. And if I do a neutral, something neutral, it worked out OK, not great, not bad. It's like give them the electric chair. That was terrible. Right. No, this is the worst. These people and the Democrats, they're partners. It's a partnership. How about on the newscast, like the word manufactured, it's manufactured. At every newscast, tonight in a manufactured deal along the border, the word's never been used by, all of a sudden, every newscast is using it. It's a talking point given to these fakers by the Democrats. So they know they can't win the 2020 election. So they're pursuing the insane impeachment witch hunt. I've been going through it now. I've been going through it now for more time than I've been in office. Because, you know, like struck with his insurance deal. (laughs) This was before. Remember this. This was before. That statement was made months before I took office. That statement was made months before the election took place. They said, just in case, we're going to have an insurance policy. That only means one thing. We're going to get them out. So they're telling us we can't let that ever happen again to another president. And Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, a lot of people. The great Mark Levin. We have a lot of great people. Lou Dobbs. Great people. You know what they said? Every one of them, plus many others. There's no other man that we've ever met that could have taken it. It's true. Maybe I'm a little different up here. I don't know, but I enjoy it. To me, it's I'm energized because we're draining the swamp.
The Democrats' brazen attempt to overthrow our government will produce a backlash at the ballot box, the likes of which they have never, ever seen before in the history of this country. These are bad people. My phone call, as an example, with the president of Ukraine was perfect. Everybody that looked at it. And the only reason I released it was that the Democrats put out a phony narrative. So I had no choice. And I don't want to do that as president. Every time a president from a country calls me or I call them, we have to release the text. How can you do business that way? Who's going to want to speak to your president? So the president of Ukraine reiterated today at a major news conference on other subjects that he was under absolutely no pressure. He doesn't even know what they're talking about. And he used the word, there was no blackmail during this call. He used that term. So in theory, that should be the end of it. Think of it. A president of the United States who's made our economy with a lot of help from all of you, frankly, but from Mike and from some of our great senators and some of our great people that we have with us. We made this the strongest economy in our history. We've rebuilt our military. We're taking care of health care like nobody's been able to do. What we've done is incredible. And by the way, we're protecting your Second Amendment. If you don't have me, your Second Amendment is gone. So, we have the greatest economy, the greatest military. We've rebuilt our military. Two and a half trillion dollars because when I took it over, it was a mess. And what do they want to do? Let's impeach our president, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we're going to have a turnout the likes of which we've never seen in the history of our country. So we were really forced just to put it away. We were forced. I said, just do it. Got the approval from Ukraine. I have to ask. I said, hey, do you guys mind? They said, that's a strange request. They said, don't worry about it. Do you mind? And they said, please, go ahead. Nothing was said wrong in that call. So we released the transcript of the call, which was so good that that crooked Adam Schiff, this guy is crooked. He had to make up a fake conversation that never happened, and he delivered it to the United States Congress and the American people. It was a total fraud. And then Nancy Pelosi said, oh, I think the president said that. These people are sick, I'm telling you, they're sick. And you know what? Had they waited one day longer, they would have had the transcript of the actual call, word for word. It would have been perfect. Instead, they released it. They went early. They said all these horrible things. You know why? Because they never thought in a million years that I was going to release a transcript of the call. So Nancy Pelosi, upon hearing a false story from a whistleblower that had no clue what was going on in that call, or somebody gave her very bad advice, but also hearing it from Shifty Schiff. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi said a day before seeing the transcript of the call with the Ukrainian president, we've got to impeach him. We've got to impeach him. Right? And then she saw the call and she said to her people, what the hell? Nobody ever told me this was the call. But she keeps going anyway because the press is fake and they play right into their hands. The do-nothing Democrat extremists have gone so far left 
that they believe it should not be a crime to cross our border illegally, and it should be a crime to have a totally appropriate, casual, beautiful, accurate phone call with a foreign leader. I don't think so. As our brilliant White House counsel wrote to the Democrats yesterday, he said their highly partisan and unconstitutional effort threatens grave and lasting damage to our democratic institutions, to our system of free elections, and to the American people. That's what it is, to the American people. It's so terrible. Democrats are on a crusade to destroy our democracy. That's what's happening. We will never let it happen. We will defeat them. I mean, look at their debates. These people are crazy. They want to spend $99 trillion to redo buildings all over the United States. I said, what about China? What about Russia? What about India? What about all these other countries where that stuff is just flowing out? It's all right. Let him give you the answer. Man, did the cops act fast. He's already gone. That's the fastest. You know, I have. Look, I love law enforcement. I love the cops. I love the police. I love it. <laughs> Minneapolis. Minneapolis. You got a rotten mayor. You got to change your mayor. You got a bad mayor. You got a bad mayor. But you know what? The police, I've done this a lot. And every once in a while, who have a, we, very little disturbance. It's really, actually, is there any place where we could have more fun than at a Trump rally? <laughs> And we've set every record at every place virtually that we've gone. And one of the big musicians said, and Trump does it without a guitar. Can you believe it? Without a guitar. But this guy, so I've had it a lot where, you know, but sometimes it'll take the police like 30 seconds, 50 seconds. It's like Roger Penske, when you watch him, who's getting the Presidential Medal of Freedom, by the way, very soon. Great. He won 18 Indy 500s, 18, Roger Penske. But it's like the way they change those tires. It takes four seconds to change the whole damn thing. I say, how the hell do they do it? That's the way these cops just reacted. That was a record. I think it was a record. I've had good service, but I've never had anything like that. I look up, the guy is already gone. Ah, we love you with the red shirts. So now the Democrats are making a pathetic bid to save Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe, buddy. (laughs) And you know what? I'd love to run against him, to be honest. Anybody like that, if you can't beat him in a debate, you got a big problem, folks. Big, big. You can't beat him in a debate, you can't be president. Because what are you going to do against President Xi and Kim Jong-un? You can't beat Sleepy Joe. But now we're going to meet with Kim Jong-un. I don't think so. (laughs) But he's totally owned and totally controlled by the Washington swamp for many years. Two months after President Obama put Joe in charge of Ukraine policy, they put Joe Biden in charge of Ukraine policy. Listen to this. And the press will not write it. They say, in totally unsubstantiated charges, every time they talk about him, President Trump has said that his son walked away with a fortune. Now, you know that's a totally unsubstantiated charge. Really? It's not unsubstantiated, it's fact. Joe's son, Hunter, got thrown out of the Navy, and then he became a genius on Wall Street in about two days. (laughs) By the way, whatever happened to Hunter, where the hell is he? Where's 
Hunter. <laughs> hey, fellas, I have an idea for a new T-shirt. I love the cops, but let's do another T-shirt. Where's Hunter? Where's... Here's Hunter being examined by Sleepy Eyes Chuck Todd or some of these people. Oh, Hunter, uh, it's so great that you're here, sir. Um, Hunter, you don't remember shit. Yeah, I know they're giving you approximately $168,000 a month. That? I hear they paid you a big check of $3 million. I just want to speak on behalf of NBC, who's absolutely one of the worst. I just want to tell you, Hunter, Hunter, I just want to tell you, I couldn't be happier for you and your family. And I, I know you don't know anything about energy, and I know it's an energy company, but I, I think they made a great deal, Hunter. And then they fly to China. And I'm dealing with people right now. They're tough as hell, those Chinese negotiators. And Hunter, who's not too smart, Hunter. He goes in, he has a meeting, he walks out. It is fund with 1.5 billion, with a B, 1.5 billion dollars. These aren't the same Chinese negotiators that I'm dealing with, I can tell you. <laughs> These are not the same ones, but we are doing very well in that negotiation. Now think of it. Where's Hunter? Okay, get, get it. So where is Hunter? I want to see Hunter ask these questions. Hunter, you know nothing about energy. You know nothing about China. You know nothing about anything, frankly. Hunter, you're a loser. Why did you get $1.5 billion, Hunter? And your father was never considered smart. He was never considered a good senator. He was only a good vice president because he understood how to kiss Barack Obama's ass. It's true. It's true. And they're always saying the same thing. Yeah, he got a billion five. We admit it. They admit it. There's nothing. But always that same thing. Hmm? President Trump made a totally unsubstantiated claim about Hunter Biden and his father. It's not unsubstantiated, you crooked son of a guns. It's a hundred percent true. smart guys on Wall Street, and I know all of them, that they are smart. They've never seen anything like that one before. I've called them. Does that ever happen? Never happens. Guy walks in, no experience, no nothing. Walks out with a billion five. Gee, flies in on Air Force Two with his father, the vice president. Don't forget, that's when he was vice president. So China gives his son 1.5 billion. How would you like to have Joe Biden take over negotiations right now with China? I don't think so. I don't think so. Meanwhile, Biden allowed China to rip off America for eight years as vice president and Barack Obama let him just rob us blind. And we're not doing that anymore. Those days are over. The Bidens got rich, and that is substantiated, while America got robbed. That's what happened. Sleepy Joe and his friends sold out America. They didn't have tough negotiations. I look at these trade deals, 
And I say, who the hell could have done this? If you didn't, if you had no business instinct, no business ability, if you had nothing, if you're dumb as hell, you wouldn't make these deals. They're so bad. <laughs> I say, who made these deals? Who made these deals? But we're ripping them all up and redoing them, and they're going to be very good. Wait till you see what happens. And... <laughs> And now that I'm your president, you see it. America is winning again, and we're respected again as a nation. This is why he got voted for. Only so much this shit we gonna do. brand new report just came out as I'm walking on the stage. Hard to believe, actually. Wow, wow, Biden. It turns out that Joe Biden was vice president. He worked with the so-called whistleblower. This is nothing but a partisan witch hunt, sabotage, and I'm sure they're going to say it's totally unsubstantiated. But one of them wrote the story. Congratulations, by the way. Congratulations. That's very nice. That's really good. That's the way you should do it. Good, good, good. In the twisted worldview of Democrats and the media, it's okay for politicians to ship our jobs to foreign countries, flood our communities with drugs and crime, and enrich themselves at America's expense. Their treachery is allowed because they go along with the rigged Washington game. And it is far more rigged. When I ran, I thought it was rigged. But this is crazy what's happening. But if you refuse to bow or bend to the Washington swamp, which I could do very easily, I'd be much more popular. Folks, I'd be, it would be so much easier. You know, very smart. I got it. Nothing present. I gotta tell you, isn't it much better when I go off script? Isn't that better? So much. Listen, it's two point two trillion dollars worth just, of bad debt. It's just, people got bad loans. You hand out eight hundred billion dollars hey, to the bank, and they start going on vacation. The greatest buyer of advertisements in the history of the world. Mike Lindell, my pillow. Oh, yeah. Quick. No hesitation. Mm -hmm. I have never seen so many ads. I think he's the greatest ad negotiator in history. And I told him, I said, would you do me a favor? All the money we spend in these political campaigns, if I gave some of that money to Mike, I think we'd have ads every single minute of every single show. I never saw so many. Anyway. But the lawless political establishment will try to frame you. They'll persecute you. They'll swear and just swear up and down that they're telling the truth. When Nancy Pelosi was on television the other day. And QE4. I have to say. I have to say, I was very proud of George Stephanopoulos. I was very proud. It's not often. She said, no, no, Shifty Shift told the truth when he said that. Stephanopoulos said, no, wait a minute. No, no, it wasn't the truth. It was a false statement. No, no, it was the truth. He said, no. And then she she really believes it. So she's either got one of two problems. She's either really stupid. Okay? Or she's really lost it. Or maybe there's a certain dishonesty in their supply. But they smear you. They spy on you. And they target your friends, your family, your staff for harassment, for abuse, for destruction. I came down to Washington with incredible people. We won a great political campaign. They were bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. We know that's a nice phrase. They came down. They were happy. 
they wanted to turn the country around. They wanted to do great things. All of a sudden, they get summoned and they get subpoenaed by Robert Mueller. How good was he as a witness? Not too good. And by people that were, I call them the 13 angry Democrats that turned into 18 angry Democrats. It was disgraceful. So people that were going down, sir, what is this? Me, I look. Oh, me wow. Me lost their job. A down the they got clothes on to go to what work. What the hell is this? The they took people. I really mean this. Oh, they took people. That were full of life and now. energy this and vigor. We had just won the no greatest man. campaign in the history of American right politics. It's true. It's true. And they destroyed their lives. They destroyed their lives. They went home. I could name many people, one in particular, who came down, an incredible young woman. She was going to help people. She wanted to help people. She had causes that were so good, she wanted to help people. And she ended up going home dark, dark. Her life if, if you know you, became you hell. Bad debt, they ru ruined people. They destroyed, people they destroyed people. They destroyed people. Bad credit and good people. People and that ended up paying oh, far pay more money in legal fees than they made. Then they made. Like then they made. Then three they destroyed that, they great People, they're vicious, horrible, and the media was behind every single step. They destroyed so many lives. They destroyed so many lives, and they're continuing to do it, and it's a disgrace. When all of their ludicrous hoaxes have been exposed as frauds, these you know sinister fakers well, then the tried to impeach you, you for daring to call okay. out their be. own corruption. $50,000 off of you. There's so nothing $50, like the dirty $50, political I'm establishment. I'm gonna get and I have to tell you, this, this is, you know, years. friend of mine, Versus very smart, brilliant guy. Mortgage. He's with me about two weeks ago. That's what these banks We just got rid of the Russia hoax, and then a week later, the Ukraine hoax starts. I had a week of like, I can think about everything perfect, it's so beautiful. And he said, President, I said, call me Donald, you've called me Donald for 35 years. I will, thank you, Donald. I've lost all my friends because they're all scared to talk, you know, like, you know, honestly, I'm the president, they, they can't talk to me anymore. It's like, it was like they're it was afraid. Like they respect the office. Yeah, it's you. true. They say, so do this. President, I say, you you do me a favor, now. Richard. You've called me you Donald for 30 years. Call me I Donald, like, please. I want somebody to call me Donald. <laughs> He said to me, I just told him, call me. He said, President, I can't do it. He said, So he says, President, you've been here now for, you think of it almost three years. Can you believe we're here three years? We, we, it's we. I'm cooking in the kitchen. And we have to promise them no more than 16 years, okay? No more. No more. 16 more years. I'm only kidding. Now they'll go back, see, he wants to run for more. But he said, he said, President, could I ask you a question? It's so important to me. You deal, he's a great businessman, very successful. He said, you deal with all of these nations, he's great, powerful. Who is the worst to deal with? Is it China? Is it North Korea? Is it India? Is it Russia? Please tell me, Mr. Press, who is the toughest nation to deal with? I said, you're not going to believe this. It's the USA is the toughest nation to deal with. The USA. It's true. Because we're dealing with some very sick and deranged people. There's nothing that the dirty political no, 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 establishment no, 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 no. hates more no, than no, no, no. a president we that they cannot intimidate, own, and control. 
They're trying to stop me because they know that I don't answer to them. I answer to you. It's true. The thing is, I have no problem with you being That's why I don't say shit. Taliban. You know, I never say this. I don't think I've ever said it in a speech, but maybe they'll find out if I did. They do what they got to do. They'll give me pinocchios. He said it before, but I don't know if I ever said it. But you know, I make as president about four hundred and fifty thousand. I told you don't read no book. I give it away. You ain't read. They cut the way. I don't care. I don't care. I never hear anything. Can you imagine if I did? I give it away to. You can only give it. You can't keep it. You can't actually make a gift. You can give it to your different uh, agencies. So I can give it to health, I can give it to transportation, I can give it to military, but I give it away all the time, every, now, and if I ever did, but it's 450, if somebody stays from, let's say a Middle East country, in one of my hotels, and we charge him $392.53 for staying, and I never heard of the guy, and I don't want to hear about him, they say Trump is getting rich off our nation. Really standing. I lose billions being president. I don't care. It's nice to be rich, I guess. But I lose billions. If somebody rents a room someplace and they pay me too much in rent or hotel fees, I never heard of the people. I never know who they are. They say emoluments. Nobody ever heard of the word emolument. Emoluments. You're wrong, right? It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. We don't care. We, we, all we know is... I tell you, it's cost me billions of dollars to be president. It really has. Mayor. And at some point, I'll probably have to prove that, and I look forward to doing it. It's very easy. That's on you, but you're going to It's very it. easy. Here, that's child and danger. Okay. And there is going. nothing that makes no me danger. happier okay. than <laughs> making that right. decision to run and win and straighten out the mess that these people have created. So in a desperate attempt to attack our movement, Nancy and Chuck, two beauties, have given control of the Democrat Party entirely over to the radical left, including Minnesota's own representative, Ilian Omar. I, 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 if you told me that, you know, you I know you that, people. And I, was overseas, I know you people. I, I know the people of Minnesota. And I want to tell you. Only happened on TV. I and I also, at the same time, it's both a question and a statement. How the hell did that ever happen? How did it happen? How did it happen? You pull up. Congresswoman Omar is an America-hating socialist. She minimized. The That's September 11th attack of, uh, on our homeland. Where far more than 3,000 people like died, robbery. saying some people did something. Big deal. Some people did something. She pleaded for compassion for ISIS recruits right here in Minnesota. Omar laughed. That American speak of Al Qaeda. You remember that tape? Speak of Al Qaeda. Telling soulless. But when we say, bro, listen to me. You need to come out of the cloud and come on your own time. It's actual. You talking about? But when we say something about the United States, you just don't say America with any intensity. Remember that? Representative Omar has a history of launching virulent anti-Semitic screeds, whether you like it or not. She said the U.S. support for Israel is all about the Benjamins. She said that pro-Israel lawmakers have an allegiance to a foreign country. Omar wrote that Israel has hypnotized the world. May Allah awaken the people and help them to see the evil doings of Israel and the United States. How 
do you have such a person representing you in Minnesota? I'm very angry at you people right now. She is a disgrace to our country, and she is one of the big reasons that I'm going to win and the Republican Party is going to win Minnesota in 13 months.